What's up, guys? How you guys doing? I was about to forget. Hold on. As usual, I got the same damn song playing in the back. Never forget your mule group. <laughs> How you guys doing? I usually see you all on Monday. But uh, apparently... Apparently Behringer decided to release a firmware... Today? 15th of April. Hope you have a coffee in hand. This one's done. Because I'm going to guess today will be a long stream. It's been a long time that I did a long stream, but... Um, I was honestly I was hoping for this firmware to be released sooner uh, closer to honestly let's say a week ago I was expecting Monday to um, do a live stream on the new firmware but apparently it needed some uh, more uh, calibration I hope everything is good now and let me begin this video by showing you a copy of the PDF that we got here. Hold on, I'm also my own camera operator. I'm doing everything myself here. I'm just switching my camera. Um, what's what's new? Uh, hold on, I need some volume. What is new in this firmware is uh, mostly the MIDI stuff that we're gonna go over or try to. I don't have much uh, MIDI device and I don't have that much MIDI knowledge too, but uh, I know my way around enough to make things work. You know, I did a video, actually my best video on YouTube so far is how to set up a MIDI interface with OBS, which has nothing to do with the wing. But some people use the wing to do that, to use it as a MIDI controller. So, that could do the trick. I uh, just tried to read some comment. Uh, hey, Rolf. What's up? From Belgium. I also have... Uh, is it... In French, I would say Jan, but it's maybe Ian. Right? Ian Craig. What's up? Mastering demo would be great from Peter. Uh, hi, Peter. I think you are the moderator of the Wing uh, Studio. I think you. Yeah. You, uh, sorry, I don't remember what your face group, your Facebook group name is. I feel bad about it. Hold on. Let me open that. I don't want to say anything stupid. And yeah, Studio Mod Group. Studio Mod, Wing Studio Mod Group. If uh, any of you guys is uh, more in the studio thing, uh, go join Peter's group. He's been really cool. He didn't ban me like I was banned on uh, some other face groups. Mostly the main uh, Wing group just banned me because I posted a video um, when my when I'm basically lost my channel at some point I had close to uh, 700 subs 600 something and I was banned so um, hold on let me get back to OBS here uh, I'm not here to complain I'm here to talk about the new firmware so uh, I also tried to read the comment is it only me or the PDF is fluffy and not readable uh, are you on a phone because here on a 32 inch screen this thing is kind of big but I can make it bigger but it's a screen cap so uh, I'm gonna do this hope it's better for you guys if you if you are watching on sorry if you are watching on a phone it's probably small and as you can see, I was not prepared for that at all. 
So, um, is this camera all the way back? I feel close. I don't like that much being in front of a camera, even if I'm running a YouTube channel. Uh, okay, so I think I covered. I uh, know, actually, you forget to say uh, he and or Yan, he and he and Craig's, he and probably he and. Um, looking forward to seeing uh, new three band EQ. Yeah, yes, this is one of the feature that uh, I'm looking to forward to. Uh, actually, speaking of feature, we'll just gonna read over the list and see what's in this in this firmware update. I know it's in the work. I know it's been in the work for a long time, but um, I did not check it out. I don't like to check out firmware before they come out because I don't want to... Uh, I'll be honest here and say I don't want to leak any information or I don't want to give out any uh, false uh, false information to anybody, so I just wait for the official firmware to be released before I check them out. And also because I'm doing uh, work on the wing during the week, I actually just finished uh, mixing five video for an artist that will be soon on YouTube. And because I'm working with it, uh, I don't want to lose time working with an unstable version that may crash. So I wait for the update to be official and see from there. But the new effect, something that a lot of people wanted to have, uh, a feature that a lot of people want to have in their wing. This is the multiple filter types, dynamic EQ and limiter. This is going to be useful for you guys who wanted the crossover or that kind of stuff. Uh, the Velvet Imager Stereo Enhancer. Not really sure what is it, what the use of it is. I know this is like a, uh, I think it's like a phase analyzer, but we'll we'll discover that. The Triple Dynamic EQ. Yes, can't wait to try that. Uh, new feature, new uh, a lot of new feature actually in this firmware. So hold on here. There we go. A lot of new features, so option to send MIDI CC with uh, custom control and fader. S uh, show gain reduction on monitor. On show gain reduction on monitor, limiter, meter. If anybody have um, information about that, I'm not 100% sure what we're looking at here. Uh, I know all. I know what all those words mean, but I don't know what they mean. I'll put together when you say show gain reduction on monitor limiter. Is the is there a limiter on the monitor? I don't know. Uh, global main view plus auto switch page. Okay, can't wait to check that out. I'm a big fan of virtual sound check, as you can hear right now in the background. This is a virtual sound check of some of my friend playing that I loop for about 30 minutes. Uh, option to send channel to both solo bus in live mode. Okay, we'll need to check that out. Um, source solo via listen channel 39 or aux 7. Uh, SRC control solo, SRC solo and routing page of the route. Source to listen channel. Talkback improvement, okay. Uh, Talkback indication. Okay, automatically open talk destination page when pressing solo on channel talk. Okay, we'll need to check that. that out. New talk tags to allow soloing or unmuting channel during talking. Okay, uh, new auto customization for listen and talk back channel. We we'll need to check that out. Support uh, for future wave sound grid module. The, the wave sound grid module. Uh, okay, good. So, so I know some people were wondering what uh, was happening with that. You should have a limiter control the monitor section. Really? Why is that? Or why would I want a limiter to control the monitor section? Maybe because I don't want to get myself deaf uh, soloing an input instead of uh, a mix when I'm mixing monitor, but can't uh, can't see really a reason why I need that. 
so far uh, I know I have the pad on the uh, input uh, anyway uh, just gonna go over the quick bug fix uh, pitch correction fix uh, could uh, could lead to fixed processor reinitialization. Okay, never had that problem. I never actually used the uh, pitch fix live that much. So, uh, IP fragmentation fix for long OSC packets. I know it's useful for some of you guys, but OSC and optimization is not something that I'm using. So. Not for me. Fix for rare uh, USB audio startup issue. Okay, well, never had that problem before, but good if it if it can happen and it's fixed and it's fixed before I uh, had any problem with that. I like that. Thank you very much, people over at Behringer. So I think uh, I think we'll just go on and check out the effect. No, actually, you need to go this way. Uh, we're gonna switch over to console view, and I would need to. This is a hundred percent live. You can see me do all my weird stuff live, <laughs> and when I say weird stuff, trust me, this is. Uh, this is a general public challenge, a channel. It's not going to change. This is family friendly or as much as a sound guy can be. Um, comment will be over there. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to try to bring my phone in. And I will try to see what you guys say. Uh, Can I watch my own video on my phone? Sorry, guys, I feel like it's taking a really long time. Um, okay, I can watch my own stuff. Just turn off the volume. Here we go. So that way I will have uh, your comment on my phone right next to my screen. Can I put it there? Nope. Like this. Nope. Like this. Nope. <laughs> I'm just going to put it right here. And just want to make sure that I didn't miss any comment. Uh, uh, from Peter, Ima uh, Imager maybe for White Guitar, uh, Vocal Master. I'm not a fan of using the Stereo Major for that, but uh, I know some people do. It's, it's a different way. I prefer to double or triple drag my guitar instead of doing that and just get a, like really wide image because I have something really wide to make an image with uh, but for mastering yeah some people like that I'm not I'm, I'm not a studio guy to begin with so uh, first thing first we need to do the update I didn't do it I uh, would like to do it live just in case the console crash could be really fun to watch so let's do the update sound might cut uh, when the console re would reset, but don't worry guys. I'll be right back I'm gonna do this. I think it's copying the firmware over Check your messenger uh, I'm just gonna update the console firmware while I check my message Okay, let's do a reboot. I could do it like this. Uh, nope. 
wait. Like this. Shut down. Am I back? Yes, I am. And we will start the sound check again. Sorry, I'm just getting uh, really good information on the, uh, the velvet. I'm not a... I never used that, but... Um, I got some uh, information here that can help me probably read through that. Uh, just let me know. Just let me know, Rob, if I'm allowed to if I'm allowed to say and read whatever's in there uh, publicly. Uh, just let me know if it's fine to just read that out loud. I just don't know the source of those information, so... Great. Thank you very much, my friend. I really appreciate it. So, um... One step at a time, I'm gonna try to get my trackpad here really close. And I'm gonna mask the chat for a minute. And I say, the first thing on the list of the new effect is uh, the speaker manager. I should I should be uh, good to deal with that as I did my um, as I did a little of PA tech in my days when we used to do a live show. <laughs> so where would that be? Is it an effect? Is it on bus? Is it on um, Maybe I could be wrong, but is there any change to the EQ? Did we always add eight parameter on the, the master bus? Let me know. I'm just trying to look out for um, speaker manager. Here we go. It's in the effect and the velvet imager is also in the effect. So we're going to try that in. And I think we can insert it on our main channel. Oh, yeah. Mm. Let me let me change that. I'm gonna put it after my limiter. Here. So my limiter just got back here, and we're gonna use this here. On all bosses, uh, St uh, Stefan, yeah, you, sh you should just show me this. He asked me actually a question today about um, the EQ and on the buses. Hold on, let me check. Because at, I'm, if you don't mind, uh, Stefan, I'm gonna ask that out. He asked me if how to play around with the EQ today on Facebook, and I got his question wrong. And he showed me uh, something about the how to control actually the low cut and high cut but now that you're saying over here in eq is there any change no it's a six parameter plus uh high and low shelf so i think before we add only six now we're up to eight parameter there could be wrong but 
from the top of my mind, this is what I can uh, see here. Just let me check one thing before we go. Okay, my master is a little under zero dB. That's what I need. Because uh, sometimes, because I'm basically mastering my live stream with a limiter and everything, uh, if I go to 0 0.1 dB, it's going to clip for you guys. And I want to avoid that at all costs, especially since we are going to play around with some stuff that will deal with dynamic. So, if I understand correctly, I could be wrong, but you guys are really good to let me know in the chat when I say something wrong. Uh, the minding behind using this would be to have... Uh, that on your matrix or your main and use and use it as a crossover so you would put let's say if you have a four-way uh, system you can probably put that in stereo it's probably gonna affect both channel and you can do like use four matrixes and do four uh, cut let's see let's go with the basic and go with a really really hard uh, cut at 48 dB with, yeah. As you can hear right now, we have absolutely no low end. So it's basically like a single point of crossover. If I do the same thing, I'll go extreme here. Yeah, this is only the mid. I've got to turn down the music just to make sure what I say is audible. Um, so we have the high pass, which is the point that we maybe would use for our sub. Um, I just tried to see, is this position? Ooh. I don't know if you guys can hear that, or is it the... No, it's not me speaking. Well. This is really like a time align thing, so you can change the time alignment, I guess. Um, and... How can I... Okay, low pass. Low pass will open the top. Uh, probably gonna guess. I'm gonna turn it... I'm just gonna turn it off for now uh, so I can talk to you guys. Um, great. This is a perfect, perfect design crossover point. I can... Uh, I'm gonna go with a real-life example here. Most of you guys will run sub on uh, and, uh, and if we're doing subs i can do this if we're if you're going to run subs you probably want to set your uh your higher speaker tougher to not get low end information that way it will give you more volume before clipping or the clipping before the light turn red in the back that doesn't mean necessarily clipping but this is the most common situation where you will have one, like a two-way system. If you want to go a three-way, four-way, just add an extra step and add it to an extra output. Um, there is some parameter. Let's go over the, every single parameter. So the low pass will be for you to set the frequencies that you want your sub to be cut at. Honestly, in most cases, 120 to 90 is the crossover point on most system that I uh, saw. Uh, I know the system that has a smaller diameter, uh, smaller size of subs, let's say that run 10 or 12 uh, inches subs, they go to 120. PA that you use double 18 or double 21 those cut to 90 most of the time. This is not a true rule, but they do. Uh, most subwoofer with built-in crossover just go, just cut to 100. Really depends on, uh, really depends on the system and how they sound there. You have to play with your ear. There's no, uh, there's no, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say it. Sorry, my brain just uh, don't speak English now. Sometimes it's like that. Someday I do speak English, someday I don't. Sometimes uh, my brain will go out for a few minutes. Uh, okay, so we also have a tilt EQ. So the tilt EQ will do exactly what I thought it would. It would be a 
a way to trim your system. Uh, we have, yeah, the low pass if you want to use a, if you want to make a three-way system, like as an example like this, if you were to have a low, a mid-range speaker and a higher tweeter speaker, uh, you would do something like that and you would also do, um, you would do something like this for your mid and you will probably do something like this for your high frequencies. Yeah, you guys can cannot even hear me anymore, but usually when you set your frequencies for uh, your speaker, go by the chart or go by what your PA tech told you. Or if you guys have the spec of your box, they are uh, there for a reason. Uh, just read the spec of your box and go by the crossover point of your system if you're using passive. That will be the way to go. Um, other than that, we have a phase by number. It's just not a phase by... Um, it's not just a 180 degree phase. So sometimes I'm not p -tech enough to tell you when to use like 90 degree phase versus 180. Most of the time I just try to align everything so I don't have to play with the phase other than just flip it 180. Yeah, because when something is 180 degree out of phase, it's not out of phase, but when the phase is flipped on something 180 degree, if you flip the phase or hit the flip phase button on your console, it will flip it again to 180 degree and it will just make everything, every speaker travel the same way when we're talking about crossover. So precision delay, this is also something uh, this is up to five millisecond. Uh, and can you, let's say just for fun that I'm doing, if I'm doing this, I'm gonna try to, oh no, it's not gonna, it's gonna not, not gonna be hearable. I'm hearing a slight delay in my headphone versus the sound that I'm hearing and the sound I'm hearing in my head and the sound that I listen back into the headphone and it's normal because it's five millisecond. Uh, okay, so every like it's a really precise, it's a re really 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 precise uh, delay here that we have, so we can align speaker. Uh, you probably want to use that physically in life to align subwoofer with a PA, or if you have different type of boxes uh, that you want to align to be in phase basically moving the precision delay will be the same thing as if you were to move physically your speaker uh, from one to five feet it's about one uh, millisecond of delay per feet so let's say that you want to create a fake uh, I think it's called crossfire when you have subs on a V angle and you uh, align them so they cancel the phase in the back uh, when you do that if you can't physically um, make your subwoofer in a V array, you can delay them so that the signal is like if you were to delay everything. Uh, also, something that I, I like to do is to do a cardioid pattern on my subs. I know on a festival that I'm doing, uh, I'm using uh, three subwoofer, two facing the crowd, one facing the stage. I take the... Um, the middle sub that I put in between the two faces of the crowd and I phase reverse and delay that sub until I get a total cancellation of subwoofer in the back. So that way the sound is totally, uh, it's really destroying everything up front. People will get crushed in the front row and the stage is quiet subwoofer wise. There's not a lot of low end on it. There is still sound, but, um, way way less uh, like that so that precision limiter will allow you to fine-tune and have your subwoofer perfectly aligned even if you are not physically moving them it will be the same result as if you were to delay them uh, some people I saw that before I don't know if it's a good uh, way to do it but some people also delay their mid-range in their speaker because the horn most of the time in the back of the box is uh, the the horn in the back of the box 
is uh, a little further in the back and they try to delay the mid-range so it it's like if physically they were moved back together and pushing sound but i i don't know <laughs> i don't know if it's a good way to do it i never did it myself i saw it done on some uh, speaker and that day when i was mixing with that pa everything was fine so uh, question here from Ashil: Is it five meter instead of five millisecond? Um, I th no. Oh, is it meter? It's yeah, right. It's not millis. Uh, I think it's meter because a millisecond will be abbreviation to, abbreviated to ms. So in meter, I actually never tune a PA or play it around with meter when it comes to uh, small delay. So m yes, maybe you're you're onto something there. And also I would need to I would need to check out if um, is this thing mono or stereo? Can you guys hear like a weird stereo effect when I'm speaking like that? Do you feel like it's really wide? Um, I don't know if it's just in my headphone or just me uh, talking. That's definitely not the same delay, I think. Okay. Uh, hold on. Let me get back to this so maybe the position thing that i was talking about is more in the position thing more than the this uh this one is abbrevi abbreviation is for dst i would guess is for distance this one is for position uh can anybody if anybody from uh the beta testing team is there or have any information what would be the difference here? Because honestly, I don't... Speaker position delay and distance delay to me end up being the same thing. Maybe I'm totally missing the point here. I'm not PA tech enough to know the difference, but uh, this is a little bit confusing if you don't have the answer to that. So uh, if, if anybody have the answer, let me know. Um, invert polarity, so... Okay, now I'm hearing it in both my headphone right now, so I can definitely tell that... Uh, I can... It's it's working on stereo input, so great. <laughs> Hi from... Uh, ZAF, South Africa. Is, is it ZAF? I don't know, man. What's up, Paul? Welcome. We're checking out the crossover still. Uh, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to get over it from well, get over that page. So we have four filter. We have some option here. We have uh, basically uh, it's a type of curve. I don't know for sure what the difference between those are, but I know that the type of curve will. Um, I know the name does change the type of curve and the amount of dB also change per uh, EQ curve. So let's, just for an example, we'll try the 12 dB one. We have uh, three, three version. We have Butterwork. So Butterwork, if the image is right on uh, the display here, it's a small curve. A little more aggressive uh, curve here. It's it's 12 dB per octave, but it's not. Um, you can see that the curve is changing. Uh, links with it's also yeah a different Q. It's basically uh, like the Q on a low cut. I don't know if we have that on the wing, but uh, hi David from Sweden. Hi. If you're from Sweden, I'm going to guess uh, you know Ola England and all his uh, guitar stuff. Because Sweden is not that big of a country and you guys just know each other. Just kidding, by the way. <laughs> Hi, David. Welcome to the stream. Uh, we're checking out the crossover here. So, okay. 
So yeah, like I was saying, maybe we don't have that on channels. I'm gonna grab a channel here and I'm gonna check that out. But on a low cut, uh, let's say, I know in Logic, when you play around with the low cut, it's not just a low cut, you have actually a Q curve and that Q curve will change the way that the low cut is reacting even even with a different amount or even with the same amount of db per octave the fact that you have a really thin q like let's say on uh, let's say here on a peq the q parameter will change depending will change the curve even let's say we have 20 12, 24, 48 dB. So, what I understand is, I'm just gonna come back here, is the uh, Butterwork bezel or link with, link with Riley curve will be the Q of that curve. Uh, I usually use 24 dB per octave. 48, 48 is a little bit rough sometimes. It doesn't forgive if your uh, crossover point are not, are not perfectly aligned together. But if you want to have a really definite like spectrum of frequencies going to a speaker, that would be a good way to do it. But some boxes, some boxes just don't need, just don't need more than 25 dB. 24 dB, sorry. So we have the tilt EQ point uh, here. So if I'm turning that, we have the tilt. I'm gonna boost a little bit of high end here. We have the tilt, so that way we can put emphasis on some frequencies if you were to using um, your PA with uh, a PA with not enough horn or high frequencies. You could put some emphasis there with the tilt EQ. It will turn down the low mid. I'm not really a big fan of tilt EQ. I just rather use one EQ curve and set something that I know will work. Uh, let me just check. Okay, good. All your comment will be on the video. Just wanted to, to check that. Um, Dynamic EQ, so we have a, actually second window of the crossover by the way, we have a dynamic EQ, so really cool feature here to have, EQ, we're going to turn it on, we're going to go extreme with it, and we're going to try to make it work, so I want a bend pass, I want some gain reduction, hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. I want above or I want below here. Hey, hey, hey. I'm gonna put on some music and we'll play around with it. So dynamic EQ, pretty much the same thing that we had in the console before. Uh, I would personally use that uh, on a PA where I have not enough of subwoofer to uh, compress it a little bit. So give it a chance to breathe a little more. And uh, yeah, just 
try to compress it, make the signal more compressed so I can probably fit more. There is no Q in high pass filter. What? <laughs> oh, it's not the same. There is no Q. Oh, hold on. There is no Q on a high pass filter. I'm not sure if we're talking about the same thing here. If uh, just let me know, Harry. Just let me know, Harry, if we're talking about uh, the dynamic EQ or we talk about the crossover point. So dynamic EQ here will be pretty much the same thing as we had on a console before. Uh, limiter, yeah, well, it's a limiter. Let's try some music. And I'm gonna... I'm gonna really try to smash it here. could also be another way to uh, avoid any damage to your system, especially if you have uh, subwoofer that are maybe on the limit of being enough for your PA. If you just limit them and don't send uh, any sound wave that is too big inside of them, uh, they will still give you a lot of low end, but at some point they will just give out. And even if you push more, on the fader i'm gonna actually i could i could show you this uh, i'm gonna put a filter to flat so everything is full range again uh you know what i'm gonna do it like if we were to use sub so i'm only gonna use uh the low pass filter 48 24 um 24 db and I'm gonna bring it down to 120. You won't hear me talk anymore, but I'm gonna try to smash it in the lows and see what happens. Is it just me? It compressed a little, uh, a lot for me to hear distortion. Let's try that again. I definitely hear some kind of uh, distortion here, so maybe I should um, maybe I should flag this out because you're probably not gonna hear it in a subwoofer. But if I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to see if we add uh, that on a mid-range. I'm gonna go 24. 
Let's see just for fun if we have distortion when the, the limiter kicks in. So I'm just being told here I have some uh, information that the limiter is a pretty much zero attack uh, limiting, so the, the the distortion here is expected. Uh, yeah, it's mostly noticeable on sub frequencies, so okay, I get that. I also add some really good message here, guys, if you just give me a second. Uh, I'm going to try to catch up on that. That's the beauty of live shows. So another great information that uh, I had here is the phase alignment is designed to work with software like some of the some of you guys out there who use smart so using smart uh, I, I'm not a huge smart user like I said I'm a I'm not a PA tech I've set up some PAs but I'm not a PA tech I'm not a tuning guy when it comes to PA I most of the time I just rig them up and use the soft the, the, the use the the program that is already in the software with the PA. Let's say uh, I will bring back some memories from from some view guys uh, where I work. We have a Eastern the 730 uh, and it using a old old lake uh, design. And I don't play around with it. Like the only thing I do is play around with some uh, volume gain and adjusting the EQ curve depending on the situation, but I don't play around with the phase. Uh, I just let the preset go, and honestly, that lake uh, processor is so old. It's almost 25 years old now. Um, it's so old that I'm afraid it's going to break every show I go out with it. So, yeah, the less I play around with it, the, the best it is. Um, let me read some other stuff. While I'm starting back that sound check. <laughs> okay, the position. Great insider information. The, per, the position is made to uh, compensate for the stereo field. Um, well, the stereo perception of two speaker in a different space or in the same space at different distances. So it will be okay. If I get that right, I'm going to listen to some music. I feel like, yeah, the boxes are moving around me. So it's not, it's creating a, a pan type of effect, but it's. Um, it's it's not really like panning. Well, actually, in studio, sometimes uh, when production have a lot of track available, which most of us do, but a way of mixing is to have the same track uh, on both speaker on left and your right, and you just delay one side 
So it's like if you, um, it's the same signal, but because it it comes to your brain uh, faster from one side to another, your brain think it's panning out. It's it's it does a pretty pretty much the same thing here. If I'm doing this, uh, I feel like I'm five millisecond, and also speaking is really weird. But I feel like I'm on one side, and if I turn this around, I feel like I'm on the other side. So okay, I get that. It's basically delay between your left and right. And also volume, if I'm looking at the... No, not at all. Sorry. Don't mind what I just said here. The volume doesn't change. It's just the latency that change between the left and the right that give false impression of having something change in the pan. Uh, so precision delay, I guess, would be uh, if you want to time align everything. So to time align... You can have up to five uh, millisecond here. Mm -hmm. Let me check that. Oh yeah, okay. And while I'm also having uh, those, all those good information from Rob here. Uh, hey man, can you tell me if this uh, distance parameter is in meter or it's in millisecond? I'm gonna guess meter, like Ashil uh, said but it could be it could be uh, both so I'm just gonna turn that off and I'm gonna catch up with a chat so what happened there uh, from Ari uh, the effect is only used to, the effect is only the effect will only be used on a two or more way speaker and system using several output for each set yes this is how i think this crossover is designed you uh, set it for the route the, the right output that you're going to use it so i'm using it on the main now but it's probably going to be used more on matrixes you use your matrixes to create your home old main processor like you said in your second message like a crossover on a pa system yeah Uh, it's in meters. Okay, good. So it's up to five meter. Uh, five meter. Is it, is it 15 feet? It's closer. It's something close to 15 feet or 16 feet. I think for my American friends out there and also Canadian. We, I, I've, I've always used uh, feet when it comes to PA tuning. I don't know why. It's just maybe because everything was designed in the States. So you design. Yeah. It's three millisecond per meter, so yeah, same thing, kind of the same thing as one millisecond per feet, roughly. It's one point one. So, okay, it's just a, a matter of conversion here. Thank you very much, Rob, for uh, pointing that out. Uh, about the limiter, yeah, this is it. Honestly, if I could, if I could suggest to have, I don't know how to verbalize it but is there a way to have a less uh is there a way to have less attack than the signal but still keeping everything under control uh to avoid having the zero millisecond attack and just not hear the clipping if it's possible that would be great i don't know how much uh, it involves in the back of the unit to do that but if possible that'd be good um great so there there is now a way on the wing to manage your system if you have a four-way system three-way two-way or even even if you're only using a a single pair of speaker you could use um you could use some gentle eq let's say 12 db maybe not with that Maybe if you want to save your speaker and don't go down to flat range, maybe you want to cut down on your PA and, and don't output anything under 60 hertz. Uh, I know sometimes in small places where I used to do sound when I'm when I when I started, um, I only had two speakers and I didn't want to had any more sub because the room was really bassy to begin with. So. If I don't need to amplify low frequencies, why would I lose energy? 
uh, doing it this. So Okay, I get the minding is it's a protective limiter to keep you from frying your horns or not push your speaker over the, your crossover limit. Okay, so yeah, it's a it's not it's not designed to it's not designed to help you like getting that pumpy sound sometimes that I like to have when I put a, a limiter or a uh, a compressor on my master. It's really there to protect your your PA. It's really like the is it, this is the don't go over there feature. Okay, get that. So okay, good. I just wonder. Um, as I'm saying this, I I had a conversation one day with a P attack from Solo Tech. I'm not gonna name his name, but the guy his. Uh, the guy knew what he was doing. We were on a gig together. He was like in Montreal doing local stuff when he was not on the road with uh, bands. I'm not gonna name any band, but he was touring with A-class artists. And he told me uh, I was better to avoid limiter sometimes because... Uh, sorry guys, you know what? I'm not gonna go over there. I don't know my stuff enough when it comes to PA design uh, and system design to go over this. I know how to use this. I know how to set up a PA for my small personal use. But if we're talking about line array of 40 bucks per side, uh, call me to mix in it, but don't call me to set it up. Or actually call me to set it up, but hire a PA tech to tune it. <laughs> so. Thank you, uh, Rob, for all your good information. Once again, my friend, you really help out here. Uh, I'm going to cover the chat for a second and say that the Velvet Major Stereo Enhancer is the next thing on our list. I'm going to try that on the main. It Actually, it sounds really... Um, it, it's... Uh, yeah, it's playing around with the stereo image for sure. Okay. Let's see what a... What are the parameters here? I don't know what I'm looking at, by the way. I never worked with that. I saw that little symbol here in the middle in some... Uh, I think, is it the SSL console that has that? Or another console that had that feature? I know it's telling you what's up with the phase. And... Maybe if anybody in the chat, somebody like Rob probably have an explanation on what it does exactly. I know you send me out some notes, but I'm going to try to fly blind here for a little bit and I'm going to go back into your notes. So we have uh, width, stereo width. So right now I'm not, right now everything is in mono and you can see that I have absolutely no difference between left and right. If I turn it, the more I will give out some stereo spaces yeah the more it gets stereo um, it's because of my band stuff is in stereo too so I'm gonna crank that and I'm gonna crank some music and we'll see what happened here the default setting is 75 so Yeah, that's really mono. That's also mono, or is it?
Sorry, guys, I'm just gonna answer to my to the good guy Rob here who's sending me some uh, insider information. Sorry, I'm gonna take some a few seconds. Okay, back at it. So, uh, actually, my friend Rob just sent me some. Some, let me get that file. So, uh,. I got some info, I'm just trying to... Sorry, is my phone picking up here? <laughs> Try to be discreet, but my phone picking. Uh, so, I have some description about that plugin. Uh, K-Stereo is... Uh, I'm just gonna turn it off. Sorry, it's it makes my headphones sound really weird. So I'm guessing it's annoying for you too. Uh, I have some description about the Velvet. So the K-Stereo, this is a renowned method developed by Bob Katz. Uh, it adds subtle reflection that create an artificial stereo effect. Okay, so we're gonna try that out. So yes, I really, oh yeah, it's like, it's like I'm talking into a bat room now. Yeah, it feels like a room, it feels like there's a, really early reflection stuff coming really fast at me. So maybe 100% is extreme. If I go something like the... Yeah, everything feels like it's in the room. It's in a small room. But this is also a way to give you... It, it, it feels to me like um, it would have had a small room reverb on my old mix. So I think this is basically the ID here. Um, okay, let's go. Oh yeah. Actually, this is really funny. It feels exactly like one of the room that I used to do show in where the auditorium had curved wall at some point, you know, it was a big hall and it was closing down to the stage but it was like a, a, a 50 f uh, maybe 80 feet wall closing and curving into like uh it was something like 20 feet section and then you had the stage but as you were walking down the aisle of that room in between the bench if you were talking at some point where you were between the the curve wall it sounded it sounded like that it sounded exactly like that um that room was about 100 feet wide so small like really uh, and i was like standing in the middle so i was like 50 feet on each side and if you were talking facing a wall it was exactly that feeling you were like having reflection bouncing from like in and out of the wall again and just like going like this uh, everywhere uh and it was just there only like the one or two row had that if you were talking if you were listening if you were listening to the pa uh because the pa was facing 
let's say the facing the PA was facing your face and the reflection was happening like that if you were not sending any energy to those walls it would not uh, affect it would not create that effect but if you were to talk to somebody on your left or on your right you would hear like that really like exactly like this with the especially when you were doing a clap it was doing like that spring effect so okay it makes sense it does exactly what it says it does uh, now I have on some notes I have the velvet the velvet method use velvet noise to decorrelate the left and right channel and randomize the phase and frequency component which create a stereo impression of minimum uh, of minimum correlation so okay so it just basically destroy your left and right signal right yeah 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 if I am just talking in it yeah maybe those settings here are extreme I don't know how you would how somebody would use that for real but now I feel like I'm in stereo and I have the de uh, deep I have the deep on so maybe it's affecting the signal too uh, just for fun we're gonna try the K stereo a hundred percent yeah it's more present when the deep is in uh, uh, okay so this is usable maybe not a hundred percent Yeah, it makes things more stereo. Okay, I, I can see the use for this. Uh, about the deep switch. What... What I was saying uh, is... In case stereo, uh, okay, stereo... In deep mode, more reflection are added. In velvet, uh, in deep mode, the effects is more pronounced. So it's just like... Putting more emphasis on on the mix. So let's go again 100% with the deep on, 100% with the deep off. So yeah, okay, it's 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 an uh, it's a big difference. Well, big. On a not on my vocal but on a full mix. It makes a big difference on the mix. Sorry, I'm not seeing the chat. Uh oh no. I should have kept my window open. We gotta turn it off for now. Sorry, I'm gonna just try to catch up with the chat. Uh, see what it does to a mono source like your mic. It will emulate a mono source like a stereo source. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I got some notification popping up also on top here. Uh, I'm also having other information about the Velvet Major. Um, I have the MS width. The MS width plus one minus one tells me that a uh, simple one up stereo width adjustment. This can be used to reduce or enhance the stereo content and audio material. So, uh, Hold on. Simple one up stereo with adjustment. Okay, it can be used to reduce or enhance the stereo content and audio source material. Uh, okay, it's gonna sound stupid, but oh, we need to try it. Now that I know what to listen for, so let's go again in a K. I think this is the less intrusive one. So let's go with the width to one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go just on my voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wit, 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 wit. Now to zero. Now to minus one. Okay, yeah, it feels more mono. This is feel more stereo. So it's subtle control. Let's see what some music.
it feels really subtle. In my headphone, it feels really subtle. Or maybe I need to have the stereo to 50 or something like that to see a difference. This is really something that I could see in a stereo chain to add like small, small stuff that will do a difference, but you know, you don't really notice it's there. It's not like an EQ. Uh, okay. Now, stereo-wise. So, stereo-wise, uh, it's just uh, simple stereo. Simple stereoizer function, this add artificial stereo impression, ambient for mono signal, audio signal. Tips in velvet mode with 100% stereoized stereo setting. Uh, hold on, I got another. The my the text on the image he was sent he sent me was cut, so uh, in velvet mode with 100% stereo eyes. So let's go try this. Setting the two output channel can be used to feed different speakers in order to minimize phase cancellation. Setting the two output channel. I'm... I'm not sure if that... Something that I should read. Maybe it was cut out <laughs> and it was not supposed to be released. I'm sorry. You should avoid a negative correlation. Okay. Negative would be... Um, sorry. Uh, negative would be whatever... Now, the wit in negative doesn't mean it's negative correlation, or does it? If I'm running negative correlation is when I get that, uh, yeah, 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 hold on, I was getting it uh, before, maybe with that. It just... On the vector scope, it tells me... Like, everything should be stereo, except when I start to see an image on the other side. That's cre- It's basically telling me that it's creating some phase reverse stuff, right? Or could I be wrong by saying this? Let me know, uh, if you can, Rob. I think I see- I think I understand what you mean there. It creates some- Some kind of phase cancellation when it's totally like right there. You see I get more image on the left and right more than in the top if I'm right there I believe the plugin is not affecting because It doesn't play around with anything, but if I the more I give it the more I running chance of having a phase problem Everything from the left to the middle is negative the yellow moving dot. Okay. Okay. The uh, okay. So I'm basically creating a phase issue. Try sending a 1K tone. Good. I uh, will try that. I have some. I also need to do a video about this. I have a, a really cool fake snare bottom and and um fake bass drum I would just take it out of the P of the DCA okay let's go with a 1k tone uh, I would take out the gate Was it in the DCA? Okay. It's probably gonna get annoying really fast. But I'm gonna try to send that 1K tone and play around with it. Okay. So if I leave it to zero, 
And please, guys, correct me on that. We're playing around with the phase here. Okay, so 75 with the width of 0. It's not perfectly there, but it's in the middle. Okay. If I go to... It's because the deep is on. Let's go in K mode. Hey, 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 hey. It's really annoying. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to put it just on the channel. And I'm going to lower it down. And hold on. I'm going to take it out of the mix because it's annoying. I really try to understand what's happening here. Yeah, with that one K-tone. I'm gonna turn it down because it's so... My... <laughs> gonna take that off. Gonna take those compression off. Is it going only on one side? No. Okay. If I turn the width to the left, there's a sweet spot where the tone that is totally mono, it's not stereo at all, it change from side to side. So right now, I'm, I'm just say stuff as I see it. The correlation is totally in the center, but I really feel like it's going only to the right. It's too low. I'm going to try something else. I'm going to try to crank it to something like 0 dB but or minus 6. It doesn't go higher than minus 6. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to try it. With some volume, but I'm sure you guys can hear that. Uh, I'm gonna try again, like I said. Now, if I'm moving the width from left to right, if I'm moving the width to zero, it feels like everything is mono. As soon as I start to move it, it just feel like it's going to the right. And visually, my meter also tell me the, th the same thing. So I'm just going to take it off. Uh, actually, I f should have put it here instead of the room. That way I can have a full volume. I can have a full volume without being it being annoyed. Uh... This is really weird because it was changing the width before, but now doesn't do anything. Is this actually this ends? This insert should be stereo, right? I don't. Uh, I don't have any. I don't have anything that pan or that would mono sum that.
Okay. I thought that that effects uh, rack was stereo, but apparently it's not. And if I change it back here, and turn it on. Now it doesn't change from left to right, okay. Did I switch by accident the mode? So uh, precision here from Rob said full coloration pl uh, full coloration plus one represent full mono compatibility. Negative number means out of phase. So okay. So we're playing around at some point with the phase here, or as I understand it. I would need to do some research on that uh, plugin, honestly, because I I get it. I'm changing something. I'm changing if a, a difference in the stereo feel. I'm just going to start that sound check again. If I'm putting it on the, on the master, I could definitely hear something happening. Everything's getting bigger. Uh, how it's affecting like the mechanic behind it I would need to do some research on it but if I understand right and I'm listening to my mix right now I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of stereo separation on that and the graph also telling me that I'm not how to phase that much or may maybe I am because I see something bouncing from left to right, so... And is my bass in stereo? It's actually flat. And that should be output. Oh, because that changed. Just for fun, I'm going to put that into my uh, stereo chorus. Like I usually do. I feel like I don't see the chorus. Maybe I'm stupid and I need the other rack. Yeah, that's it. So my bass now has chorus. I'm curious to see what the reading will be. I can already say that so far I prefer the uh, the stereo uh, the K stereo working good. Maybe maybe not on everything. Maybe on vocal that would be too much. Uh, Hundred percent. But great. It will expand your stereo feel when using it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I get it. I, I can hear it now. You know, you, everything is getting wider when, I, when I'm trying it. Nothing too extreme, I think. That will work for me. 
I don't I don't sound like a robot anymore. I don't feel like that much. I can hear it just a little bit behind my vocal, that kind of um, early reflection feel. But in a mix, let's see what in or out. Yeah, it it does change. Uh, would be great on guitar, yeah. Okay. Well, may, let me ask you: Is it something that you would put more on your master? Because I feel, I feel like if I was mastering a song and I didn't want to use a MS compressor, I could use this to create some depth. Or is it something that you would use more on an input per input case? Let's say that just for fun, I'm having a guitar here. Uh, it's not that stereo, but I can. Try it. Definitely changing. I don't know if it feels on individual sources. I don't know how it feels for you guys, but to me, in headphone, so I could be totally thrown up. But in headphone, it feels like the guitar player is moving from up to down in like the 3D feel. Now he's, now it's like he's down, he's like high level, and if I'm... It feels like he's getting here. More, I don't know. Feels weird. Great. I s we just spent more than half an hour on this thing. Uh, I could see use for that. I'm, most of the time, I'm not using that kind of stuff live because uh, I try to mix really wide but as mono as possible when it comes to live uh, show because not everybody is in not everybody everybody is in the triangle you know that between the PA and the sound guy so if you make everything sound really big and really wide uh, in the triangle um, it's not good for the whole around crowd you know and sometimes you are way too close to the PA uh, I know a lot of people um, design a lot of festival design their sets so that the sound guy is really close to the PA so they don't tend to crank the volume really loud. Uh, the closer you are to the PA, the, 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 the less. At some point, you will start to hurt yourself, so you just turn it down. So it's a, it's a mixing... From there, it's a mixing choice. Some people like to don't care about that, and if you don't hear both boxes... It's not your. It's not the sound guy's fault, and other don't care, or other people care about the whole crowd. I'm more of that vibe. I care about the whole crowd. If you pay some money to uh, see an artist or just show up for a show, you deserve to hear everything. Um, now for fun, triple dynamic EQ. I wish I could have some vocal to try that, but. I don't, so... Sorry, I'm just trying to catch up with a chat here. Uh, with it on, it sounds like he's playing in, in the room. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely changed the perspective more than just being stereo out or stereo. It just, it feels like... Because we hear from two different sources or ear, we hear 3D, we kind of hear 3D. Uh, if you play around with it right, some people, I know some mixing guys in studio have the skill to like put a vocal not there, they, they can put a hair, they, they have like a way, maybe it's the maybe it's something like that that they use, but they really can make the vocal flo above, float above the mix, so... Yeah, on live show, just use a bit of stereo. 
I, I'm a live sound guy. I don't know, uh, Harry, if we you ever uh, come in one of my streams. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I don't recognize all the name all the time, but uh, I'm a live sound guy. This is what I used to do for the last 15 years or 14 if 2020 doesn't count. Uh, I start when I start mixing Ben when I was 16 and end up in a career. Uh, I'm almost 35 now. Uh, gra graduated from school in 2007 and mixing live show and band since then. So I'm a live guy. That's what I want to say. I don't. Sorry, I don't want to sound like it's bragging. Um. Good. So we're gonna try to move on and move to the uh, triple stereo. So where is it? I see... Oh, it's right there. Triple DQ. So, just uh, for fun, I'm gonna check. This isn't the... Is this available f into all 16 rack space? Yes, it is. Uh... We're gonna try it on the whole mix. I don't know what the result of that will be. Uh... Just wanna make sure we don't have... No, I don't want it there. I want it here. And I want it before my limiter, so hold on. Just gonna reroute some stuff here. There we go. So now it's on the main bus. So it's... It's basically like the same dynamic EQ that we had before. Except that now we have three band. We have a threshold. I'm gonna push it. sounds like garbage because I'm playing around with way too much stuff. Sorry guys. So it's basically the same thing that we had before. Same dynamic EQ. Uh, I'm gonna reset it. This is something that would like to have for the future. If anybody... Um, well, I will try to... I'm sorry, just missed your comment here, Harry. If you remove it, I guess, uh, was not important. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna try to reset this. And yeah, this is something that could be cool. I remember on the, like, back on my LS9 day, if you were to push uh, the two EQ knobs at the same time, it would reset the EQ. This is something that I could see. Or is it? Oh, initialize. My bad. Can I? No, it doesn't want to initialize. I could initialize the whole strip. I can initialize insert one. Is it because it was not on? No, it's not initializing. It could be cool to have any initialize um, knobs next to thing, you know, uh, EQs. Oh, I'm just realizing something. What's, is there no, hold on. Is there no uh, gate or dynamic on the master? Did we have at some point 
a gate there or was it or is it just one uh, a per case no it's not a per case use here okay I don't remember if we ever had a dynamic slot uh, the first dynamic slot on the master so sorry I'm just gonna re reset or EQ here gain to zero gain to zero I'm gonna try to use it like for real I'm gonna try to make my mix sound better with that so maybe some low end run 120 gonna try to squeeze my low end just a little bit and Uh, okay, I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna try to show you, uh... No gate, ma okay. No gate on bus metrics or master ever. Great. Maybe it was... Was it on the X32 or... I remember, uh, Using something like that, maybe a ducker on the master. But I don't remember. It's it's been a long time since I ever did that. I was uh, in the place where they had uh, two sound system, and I took a split of the wireless, and I was uh, shutting my whole console down when he was talking. You know, uh, like let's say in case of an emergency, somebody need to grab a microphone and just turn down the main mix. Uh, Actually, on my case, it was shutting down my whole PA. So this is why I did it with the master, but never on the wing. It's fine, honestly. Yeah, I use a compressor as a ducker. I, okay, I, honestly, I would say I could use some of the compressor that are uh, most of the time in the first effect slot too. So I like sometimes to double compress uh, with different stuff when I'm doing mixing. Most of the time live, I don't use that stuff or I use pretty much nothing on my master. But if it's if it was never there, it's fine. I'm sure everybody will survive without one, uh, one rack slot. But where I wanted to go, uh, where I wanted to go with this, the triple EQ, something that, it's a trick that I've learned from, uh, a friend of mine who used to do hip hop, and when I start to do hip hop uh, stuff like I did on the on the mural festival, if some if somebody here know what the mural festival is, it's a big uh, big. It's a it's the biggest hip hop festival we have in Montreal. I'm the head sound and technical director there, and I'm doing the front of house because you know budget. <laughs> And doing the FOH and monitor for those guys, I uh, quickly learned that once you... Hold on, let me... I used to have a 58 here. But you'll get the idea. When you cup a mic, when you... I'm gonna do this with my microphone, sorry, it's gonna sound... It's gonna sound really bad. When you cup a mic, like a... Like most rapper would do, uh, it create a bump. It actually creates two things. The microphone become... Uh, omnidirectional, so it's gonna picking up. It's gonna pick up around more stuff because it doesn't have any sound coming from the back. So it will change the pattern of the mic when you start to cup it, and it will sound like really bad. I was about to use another word here. It's gonna sound really bad, and it's gonna boost like a really narrow range of frequencies around 1k, 1.5, 1, you know, in between 1 to 2k. So. If you want to not get uh, a lot of weird stuff happening when you have those hip-hop guy, what I do, 
I used to do it with regular heat cube, but I think we can pull it off here with uh, when using this. Hey, 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 hey. I want to go below and I want to set my threshold a little higher. I Basically what I want to do is I don't want to affect the signal when they're not cupping the mic. And I want to affect the signal a lot when they are cupping the mic. So I'm going to try to give it as much space as I can get. And uh, attack, I'm going to put something a little faster and release all 300 was well, fine. Okay. So I'm going to go on 1.5 here with uh, a smaller Q. Let's go three. And if I, if I use this, it doesn't go down. Why? Maybe because my threshold is not low enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I'm doing this, why is it not cutting? Or is it above? Uh, 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 one, two, 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 two. What I'm trying to do here basically is only clamp down on that frequencies when. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. I try to only clamp down on that frequency when they cupping the mic. So. If above doesn't work. If above doesn't work. Or below doesn't work. Why above is not doing it? Uh, I'm using 10 to 1 ratio here. What's wrong? I don't get why it's not. Cutting down. Hey, 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 hey. 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 Hey, hey, hey. I'm gonna try to do this. Hey, 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 hey. The other way around. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. It's gonna cut down. Is it? Hey, 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 hey. I feel. Hey, 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 hey. 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 One, two, 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 two. Hey, 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 hey. Is it doing it now? No. It's boosting. It's boosting a lot of frequencies. I need to do it the other way around. And having the gain down. Hey, 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 hey. Now it's not doing it a lot. Now it's not doing it a lot. I'm gonna try to lift the threshold. And if I'm doing this, it's not cutting. Why? Or it's not cutting enough. I'm gonna get the Q wider. Hey, 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 one, two, 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 one, two, 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 one, two, 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 two. Maybe the effect is uh is too much amplify on a headset, but on a 58 you get the ID. If is if it doesn't work uh like that, what uh actually you know what I'm gonna try it the way I'm used to used to try it is with a regular EQ. So I'm gonna not gonna use that now. And I just used to do that with irregular EQ. The, the thing with irregular EQ, why it's not that good is if I'm doing this and I try to, oh yeah, I'm gonna try it like this. If I'm doing this, it doesn't sound that bad. It's not good, but it's not that bad. But when I'm talking right now, you know, all, all that mid range is gone. All I want to do is basically get rid of the of the cupping noise so i would need to, to do a video on that but i used to do this with an eq and you just like it's good for hip-hop and heavy metal singer who just cupped their mic but i would need a 58 to try that out uh anyway probably have a video coming on that soon another subject the EQ, I don't get why it's not working on what I want to do. But yeah, 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 yeah. One, two, 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 two. Was I in bypass? No. I can't have been in bypass the whole time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, uh. One, two, two, two. 
Now I'm boosting it. Now it's gutting. And if I'm doing this, hey, 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 Sorry, guys. This might be really annoying for you. Okay. Well, the tree band dynamic EQ is here. Plenty of use. I'm sure that uh, you're going to find plenty of use for it. So I'm not going to waste any time on it. You guys know your way around that. Let's move on to something else. What we got... Uh, new feature, option to send MIDI CC with custom control and fader. Let's see where that would be. I know it's late for some of you guys in Europe, so I'm not going to try to uh, spend too much time on it. But is it... Uh, yeah, it's right there. When you press the... Uh, oh, you can't see my console right now. When you go into the custom control section and you press the view button, that menu will pop up and this is where you can actually assign... Um, you can assign some MIDI controls. So some of you that saw my video on controlling OBS with um, MIDI, I was using, I think the DGPIO reroute that I was using, but now we have everything basically. Um, can we... Let me just see that... This is MIDI. Is there a way to assign the fader? Because it says on the... Um, we also have the option to send MIDI program chain. Great. Uh, is there a way to send fader because it says on the chat uh, on the release note that there's a way to have custom control and fader option to send me with custom control and fader i don't see how with fader is it is it in the fader itself that that will happen probably not the Uh, let's see, in remote, external MIDI control, I think this is new, just gonna put that to USB, surface, that would not be fader, oh, okay, I just see this for the first time, okay, uh, so that will be it for MIDI, honestly, if you looking for MIDI, I know how to do it with a button, so you just send a MIDI note, toggle, push, or program change, or CC push, or toggle. Uh, if you play around with MIDI, this is one, you, you know, you probably know your way around to do uh, what you want to do with this. So let's just say as an example, like I was saying on my video uh, for OBS, I would send, I was using note, so I can just toggle note, channel, channel one, stay on channel one, let's as an example, or one through 16 and choose which note you want to use between zero and 127. And that will be read on the other side by your software, your whatever machine that you choose to send that MIDI command to and it will, uh, it will do it. Uh, it can also do some uh, program change. So if you want to recall, if some of you have old analog reverb that you're still using and you want to do some program change like per song or change your preset you can now i'm pretty sure send that out uh with one of the knob on the console show get gain reduction on limiter meet uh no hold on let me read that uh oops Press an old view to enter fader assign mode. Okay. Is it on the custom control or is it on the fader itself? It's on the fader itself. So if you are using the view button on, I'm, I'm using the one on the left. You can assign, hmm. Uh, okay, there's a lot of stuff here. Is this menu uh, new? Robert, I don't remember seeing it, but it's not because I never seen it that it was not there. 
I have view, assign. I have settings. Okay, settings for the fader. Uh, okay, you can initialize the layer. Yeah, right. Fader speed. I'm gonna keep it medium. Okay, so a lot of stuff here. Let's say just for fun, if I were to use... Um, look at the top right. Look at the top right. Settings. Yeah, I saw that. Mute group. You can drag and drop any channel to the surface. So, okay, so I could do a custom layer. Is it... What is... Is it what we're looking at here? Or I can just like maybe drop my fader. Oh, I can just reassign fader. That's great. Thank you, people over at Music Tribe. Thank you so much. This is... Oh, right there. Okay, good. Okay, so if you want to assign fader, everything is here. So I can select uh, when it says bus and hold on. Um. Okay. Channel one, let's say just for fun, yeah. This one will be channel CC, continuous control channel one. Let's say that we're gonna go to 16, channel 16. And I can select multiple if I want to. I can send multiple control change, but is it from the fader? I'm not. Okay, uh, maybe some clarification here from Rob, if you, if you can't explain it to me. Drag it down to the bottom. Okay, let's say I got my kick here. I just drag kick, or you know what, I'm going to use my input 25, my rock and roll sign, input 25. That. Okay. I'm just not sure what the bus and effect has to do with what we're doing here. Let's just say that I'm on CC channel 16, MIDI, C MIDI continuous control channel 16, if I'm sending that up to zero, am I, I don't have anything to read it at the other hand. Do that with the MIDI. I don't have anything to read it at the other hand, but uh, I'm gonna guess now that I send CC, a CC value from 1 to 127, moving the fader from up to down, right? Set that. I can't do that. Okay. Um. Sorry, I'm getting a lot of message uh, on Facebook. <laughs> I'm gonna. I brought my phone out to read you guys, so... Drag the MIDI box down. Okay. Good to know there's a new update. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff happening. 
in that new update. Especially, I uh, had somebody who requested a video about uh, not really PA, but let's say crossover output and EQ output for uh, PA tuning. So yeah, we have that now. It's uh, it's built in on every. It's an effect rack, but it's usable for you to set your PA. I'm um, just gonna bring those mid up again. The CC box like I did with the channel. Okay. Assign. So I can bring that here. Oh, here we go. And does this become... Okay. I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna do this here. Sorry, guys. You probably can't see it much, but when I did this, sending out my MIDI CC0 to here, I just transformed my channel into a MIDI fader. Uh, Thomas, GEQ on fader will be great. Uh, yeah. I don't know how useful it would be anymore, because I would say, honestly, if I can have GEQ on screen, it will be faster for me than having it on Fader. So I think I think the feature is already there. Uh, can I just grab a, a GEQ? Uh, I'm just gonna assign it to our subkick just for fun. Yeah, having it there. Yeah, I don't mind having it on Fader if I can have it on the screen. It will be faster for me to just scroll around uh, mixes and let's say just do some user uh, knobs to have my EQ popping up on mixes doing monitor and just just grab the Fader. It will be as fast as analog. And Oh, and we have the RTA in the bottom. So for some people who... Um, don't know all their frequencies right away when they start to the feedback you have a visual reference in the bottom yeah gq could be fun on fader but i would rather have uh all my 30 or 31 bands or 32 bands um in front of me and just like grab something that's that's feeding back on monitor can i initialize this one too nope I would like to have an initialize button, please. I want to reset. Like now, I know if I want to reset, I would need to do non and bring like that effect rack up again. That will reset it, but it's a long process to just reset an EQ. Tell that to the fat finger, guys. <laughs> hey, dude, I got some fat finger too, but that screen, okay. That screen is good. It's not like I don't know. Uh, I don't know, Harry, if you have uh, ever played around with M7CL, but back in the day, those screens were bad. I mean, you needed to pretty much hit on it because it was not registering right after a while. Especially if your console. I've, I've stayed a long time in the back of a truck. Those screen was getting humidities and, and stuff like that, and they were getting less and less responsive. Maybe in 10 year when we see a wing, we would go, oh, you know, those screens were bad. But, I mean, this one, let's say I'm just going to grab 2K here. It just registered. I, I did not even jump straight on it. It just, like, you know. It's the the, the target, the, the, the choice of target here is really easy. So, so, sorry, I do not agree with you. Uh, well, I agree, but don't want to offend you in any way by saying that I think the screen is good enough. Uh, okay. Fader. This is where I was. MIDI fader. This is a cool, really, really cool thing. You can assign them. And let's say just for fun that I want to get back to my um, bass drum. I would just drag it here. Okay. So as far as I understand, the interface now, uh, without the user layer, the interface is fully custom. You can 
basically have everything that you want. So, uh, how can I do this? Or actually, can I do this? Can I use the central, the center, and have channel there? I'm gonna guess yes, if I'm just doing this. Yeah. So, yeah, the interface is fully customable. I'm gonna tell you a joke, Harry, here, I, I, and it's it's a joke, but are, are you sure we agreed? Because two sound guy can't agree on something, you know? Uh, you know, you have your work to do with, but I would do it differently and better. <laughs> I'm just... I'm just joking here. Please. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm gonna put that camera back in focus. You don't want to see my fat finger, you want to see my screen. Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we agreed, but your 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 way to do it is better, right? Um what else we have? Okay, uh I want to go over that. And if anybody in the chat got uh, any cue for me on this. There is a wrong way and my way. Yeah, my yeah, your way is always wrong, mine is always right. Right? I'm I'm a pro. I've been doing this. I've been doing this. <laughs> I've been doing the same mistake for the last 15 years. What's wrong with that? I still have a job, you know? People still the phone's still ringing. Why would I care? <laughs> um <laughs> Okay. Sorry. Yeah, the touch screen is great, seriously. Um, okay, show gain reduction on limiter meter. Monitor limiter, okay. Uh, I'm gonna guess here this is ha all happening in the monitor section or am I getting this totally wrong? Hold on. I didn't have the chance to do monitor with that console, so... Um, Hi. I didn't do a lot of monitoring with it, so it's not like I... Um... Oh, congratulations, Harry, on 30 year. I wish... Well... I wish I could... Um... I wish I, uh, I would do this for 30 year and not being deaf. Or just not enough to care about it. <laughs> can't wait! Can't wait to do a live show again. I don't know for you guys all around the world, but it's been almost uh, a full year. Well, it's more than a full year here with no uh, live event allowed in Canada. I did my last show, uh, my real live show, with a ban on a on a really sketchy moving trailer and a camping somewhere but still it was a live show i did that in june and can't wait to do that again it's been a long time since i've actually all the live guys will get this i've been mixing in studio not my favorite thing to do but i guess if i really apply myself to it i can do some studio mix but Oh, I miss having hundreds of dBs of sub just pushing me. This isn't a feeling that you can't have in your studio, especially since I'm, I'm mixing on on a 5 inches speaker for, on New Newman. So, yeah, not the same, not the same feeling as having uh, 16 double 18 subwoofer per side on a festival okay so the limiter uh is in like rob just pointed me out thank you very much rob uh it's in the middle here yeah uh pro you guys probably don't hear it because it's in my headphone but okay i can 
it's hitting really hard. It's probably, I'm gonna guess it's the same kind of limiter that we have on the, uh, on the crossover. So it will be a really hard limiting with no attack and not that slow of a release. And it's just gonna limit your input. So I'm gonna ret retract what I said, you know. So, you know, sound guys never get things wrong except when they apologize for it. And I'm not gonna apologize, I'm just gonna react what I, retract what I said. I can see a use for this if I'm a rookie patch guy who doesn't tell me uh, when he unplugged the mic and my monitor are still on a few seconds before uh, the changeover and he didn't tell me and he just like pull out a phantom power microphone that I was that wasn't my listen so I can see a use for that but other than that I would feel like it would uh, it could it could trick me into thinking that my monitor are uh, saturating or my mix is saturating without knowing it so yeah uh, if I can also suggest something, I would need to take a note. Actually, I would need to listen to that uh, show again. I've been running for a long time already, but... Um, yeah, if you use IEM or headphone, yeah, it, of course, in, in your monitor... Yeah. In your, in your monitor and people unplugging Phantom powered mic, uh, not a good mix. I've been there. Uh, it, it happened. It can destroy. It, it can basically it can destroy your your earbuds if uh, that not happen. That that do happen. So yeah, it's a you know we have. I don't know if it's an expression in English or not, but in French we have. It's like a double um, double edge knife. You know, you can cut. You can use it, but you can also cut yourself using it because. It could be cool if you forget, let's say that you switch between a gig and you just rebuild on a show and you have that on, it could false the result. But if you're a pro, you, you check that and you didn't do that mistake. So, hi, Herman, Herman Bosa, everybody. <laughs> Uh, not expecting a live stream today. Yeah, I know, but the new firmware just dropped out. So, if I wait on Monday, we'll be too late. So, welcome, man. Update your console. It's time to dust it off. Uh, go to where wherever your console is set right now and plug a USB in, do a firmware update. New firmware 11 is there with a lot of cool feature. Like this one from Monitor. That I suggest everybody to take off when they switch <laughs> their show file and don't leave it on like this and have a weird have a weird mix happening because I don't think you guys can hear it but here it sounds really pompy you know it's uh yeah it's definitely it's definitely limiting it's it's a cool feature as a safety if you dealing with un or I was about to say unprofessional. No, I'm not gonna say that. If you're dealing with less experienced uh, guy around you, plug in and unplugging things for you could be could be a he, your hear saver, your in ear saver, your listen monitor saver. If you put it to minus 18, let's say, and you don't uh, blow your head off if something happened. Okay. Yeah, no, I get, I, I get it, uh, Rob. This is a, this is really like a, a lifesaver. Actually, this is a, this is something that is there that you never want to use. It's there just in case, but you never want to use it or never have to use it. But turn it on just in case. Uh, what else we have? Option. Okay, the global main view. I saw that when I was strolling around. This is cool. This is really, really cool. Uh, I'm going to check here why my main... Uh, can you guys see this? Yeah. 25 is in blue here. 
And I want to see why. Is it because... Um, <laughs> I got nothing in there. And I got nothing in there. Okay, now it's not patch anywhere. Let's go back to the setup. Okay. 25. If an input is empty, will it show orange like that? I just tried to understand what the color pattern here is. Uh, just try to understand what the color pattern is for this. Uh, Blue, okay, so blue is main and alternate is orange. So I'm gonna ask, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, sorry, I'm trying to read. Uh, okay, Harry, hold on to this. I'm just gonna finish with uh, the, I'm just gonna finish with the, uh, the alternate main here and I'm going to switch to your question really interesting topic that we're going to go over so if I'm in orange okay is it me or uh, alternate used to be green and it changed now to to orange Okay. And also, if I can ask Rob, um, why, when switching alternate, if nothing else on the console, console changing is because the alternate input are not set, which is actually not through. Or would I need to select everything no it doesn't make sense mm -mm -mm. okay i don't know why only 25 is changing here if i'm doing this <laughs> Orange is their fetish color. I'm sure there's a joke here. Sorry, I'm gonna put the chat back for you people watching back. Um, a channel can be set as auto or manual to change the global switch. Okay, so if I go automatic change Hold on, I'm gonna try this. If I go to automatic on all my channel, let's say... Uh, this is not... I have way too much stuff on that console. Uh, da -da -da. If I put it automatic, it will change. I'm pretty sure it will do that. I will put my snare back also. So if I go to here, assign channel, I want my snare here. Thank you. Got it to uh, just put everything to automatic. And if I'm doing setup audio here, yeah. Why is my input 2 didn't follow? Because I select the wrong input. It was 12. It was 12. Yeah, it was 12 instead of 2. Okay, so back at it. If I if all my input are basically set to automatic as soon as I'm doing this, I would switch between my virtual sound check or my other alternate input in my main could be 
could be really cool to do like switch between your recorded session, let's say your tape playback or SD card playback um, and your live band. Actually, something that a really fun experiment that I did with uh, my main project is I recorded them. It was on the X32 back day, back in the day, but uh, I recorded them on the X32 and said, don't change anything to your in-ear mixes, but don't play and just listen to your mix. And some, uh, some of the guys were amazed how loud their vocal or the instrument were in the mix when they were not playing. You know, the context that you're listening to something, it's really game changing. So uh, I, I invite you to do the same experience with your band uh, because it's so easy to just change like that. So make them play a song, record it on the SD card. Like it's so easy now and have them listen to their mix in and out with and with not playing. Some of guys will real some guys were, were will realize that their mix is really loud. So um, start to push and hold the view on the channel strip. Okay, what we're talking about here, um, Harry? Yeah, if I if I hold the view here, it will switch to the layer. It's the same thing as I'm doing assignment, uh, as, as going to the assign tab. And you have now all your option for your fader here. And you can initialize layer. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna try something. I'm just gonna press save. Uh, I think I save it. I'm gonna press save. Just save my show file. I'm gonna try to do a quick, uh, just for fun. We're doing experiments here. Initialize layer. It just bring back everything to stock. So it did not initialize like my fader. That would happen in the library if I want to um, initialize something. Or actually, can I? I'm thinking out loud. Can I initialize? Yeah, in initialize, I could only initialize my channel, let's say. Speaking of channel, uh, Harry had a really good question. Uh, I'm gonna try to read the chat here also. It's a lifesaver if you use the alternative for external processing. Let you read the. Yeah, if you let's say that you're inserting something in your uh, live rig, uh, Rob. Yeah, yeah. This is actually this is one of the reasons why I never do that. Uh, I remember probably ten years ago, I. I had a Yamaha O1V with a light bridge from M Audio, which was 30, 30, 32 input in and out of light pipe. And I hooked up the O1V with uh, the light pipe in and out. So I had 16 channels that I could insert because back, in back in the day on those console, you had a selectable insert point. So you could insert a that in and out I did it on one show and uh, I inserted like a lot of the wave stuff. It was maybe it was not 10 years ago. It was uh, actually it was before the X32. I had I had one of the first X32 in Canada seven years ago. So maybe seven years ago <laughs> or eight years ago. It's been a long time. And I remember inserting uh, wave plugin with my laptop. I had a really good MacBook back in the day and brought my MacBook, did some C6 on vocal, stuff like that. Like maybe one plugin per input. Just tried to keep it under processing power of my laptop. And during the show, one of the light pipe went out. It was still connecting, but I was losing frame and I was desyncing. 
In the middle of the gig, I had to remove all my insert from everywhere and re-EQ in between two songs, like all the processing that I did. X32 came out in 2012, uh, so that would be... nine years ago. Wow! <laughs> X32 came out in 2012. Maybe, I don't know if it was came out in 2012, but was it available in 2012? And I remember, I think it came out at Summer NAM or close to Summer NAM, or it was announced uh, in January and only was shipped in the summer. Maybe I could be wrong here, but anyway, back, you, you remember the day when an O1V was a still, an, a blue O1V96. From Yamaha was still a good console to use back back then it was the cheapest option that I could fit in the back of my car with I was overusing it to 16 input because uh, some of you who don't know on those console you had uh, 12 mic pre a, a dot optional so you could bring more input and you had four line input which had absolutely no gain, even if you were cranking it. There, there was a gain knob there, but it was just like amplifying noise. And I used to do my band, like everybody was on in ear so I did... I think the lead singer wanted to be mono, but everybody else in the band want, had wanted to have stereo mixes, so I built the show like that, with like 16 input. And did my, I, I did start up like that it was the first console that I ever bought that I did show with um, you got your uh, you got your January 2012 and some few got November and December 2011 okay I don't know and uh, maybe you can insert this uh, in the, in private if you want to uh, Rob but are you just um uh, are you just on the same uh, Microsoft team as I am, or you uh, work with Music Drive? Be, uh, you don't have to answer that publicly if you don't want to, but you, if you want to, to let me know in the, on Messenger. I'm just curious. But I'm going to move on here and say that, uh, yeah, Insert Live could be, a, could be used now. And also, it could be a feature. Maybe, maybe if we ask uh, out... If we ask that uh, loud enough, we can have extra uh, insert point because some of you may know that here in the effect rack, we have the option to have in and out, like physical in and out that we can patch. So let's say uh, like I was doing my little trick of inserting my ADAT input, my, my ADAT in and uh, output and input on the 01 V96 v2 not the vcm the v2 uh, you can do that now but we're limited to using the effects block i don't know how much processing it is to insert that maybe this is a feature that could be enable uh, for all 48 channel which is gonna get me back to where i was going with ari uh, and he said since the mixer is 96 channel 48 stereo how do you control all of them if the layers only goes up to 40? Actually, the wing is 96 input. It's not 96 channel. It's 48 channel, mono or stereo. If, if you want to use 96 input, you need to have 48 stereo channel. But every combination in between is available between 48 mono input in 96 stereo sources on 48 input so as an example i have my overhead here which is two sources i still i'm selecting here if i want them to be mono or stereo that's good for every channel in the console and like somebody else was pointing um is it Terahedron? Sorry if I say it wrong. Um, it's 40 full feature channel. 
with some uh, somewhat less processing. As you can see on this one, I have no gate, no compressor from the strip. I can also, and only one insert point, but if you really need to make your, your way uh, with this, you can have any of the effect uh, inserted on the eight oxes. And also, I'm gonna guess if you're asking that question, you don't know about that. The wing doesn't have uh, effects return input. It only has... The way that you're dealing with your effect is when you have a boss. Right now, I'm selecting a, a, a boss. You can assign it to any of the four main. So basically, you're saving on channel count because your, your effect boss are also used to send to your main. So, you know, I have a video about that. Once we're done here, go take a look at that. I explain how to do your uh, stereo effect return. Your, well, uh, yeah, how to do your stereo effect return with no channel, that no dedicated channel. You just assign the bus to the main, and you have option to EQ after that. You can also have um, other processing if you want to, because you have two insert point per channel, per bus, per uh, main. So this is how I end up with like my crazy mastering chain here uh, on the bus i have a a sold bus uh, a g bus compressor i have another insert i have an eq and i have a limiter and i could insert something else here if i wanted to so that's a lot of uh that's a lot of option for every input can you send a bus to an input you can there's a way to do it i think but why uh, i'm curious why would you do that in order to have bus return um you don't need to but if you hold on i know i did something like that in my video where i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna use my effects uh here that I got. Let's say that I got 16, which is my uh, plate. I'm gonna use this. I know I show a way how to create uh, stereo return, so I'm gonna use my aux A, and I'm gonna use my, yeah, you can send the bus back if you want to. Let's say that I'm using uh, 15. It's gonna be a stereo sources that I'm patching into my uh, auxiliary channel 8. But you don't need to because you can send a bus. The, the bus can pretty much do everything that you want uh, from your channel return. You can send that bus to other bus. So let's say that your singer, because all the buses are stereo too. So when you're doing in-ear mixes, you can do 16 stereo in-ear mixes for 32 output. But let's say just for fun that you use like right now, I'm using Effects 16 as my uh, plate reverb, and let's say that my singer want to use want to have some reverb in his uh, mix. I can just select. Sorry, I can just select. Hold on. My coffee is far gone. <laughs> um, sorry, guys. So let's say that I'm selecting my bus 16 and I want to send that to my uh, first eight in-ear mixes. If, if you want to see some kind of limitation, yeah, you can only send a bus to another bus in the first eight one, in the first bus one through eight, and after that it goes only to matrixes. Uh, but yeah, let's say just for fun that you want to send your bus 16 into the bus 8 that is your singer and he wants to have some reverb you can just do this you can set pre or post uh, depending on their bus and yeah that would do it that way I, I don't feel limited by not having effect return oh sorry a lot of thing happened in the chat um, do you think from Eric hi Eric I'm sorry I'm gonna take a break of the console view for a second, and I'm just gonna talk with you guys. Gonna get this out of the way. 
Um, so Eric said, I don't see, um, you don't have the chat now, but it's okay. Uh, I'm going to read that out. Do you think the wing mixer one day will come in a rack version like the X32? I have absolutely no information or official information about that, but I seriously think that they will do some kind of uh, M32 core replacement or X32 core replacement uh, at some point, I hope, because I'm seriously due uh, to replace my X32 core. Uh, this is what I use on smaller gig with my DL251, so... I hope one day I will get the, the same processing as I can in a wing because I'm also using the X32 core as a split for my band. I let them uh, run... I, I do monitor in rehearsal with them and I let them do their own thing with their phone for in-ear. So most of my project just deal with their... I'm dealing with the sound, I'm dealing with the gain, I'm dealing with the EQ, but once that is set, it's pretty much stay as a preset until I really need to change it and they just deal with their in your mixes and I overlooked that but I'm doing my own thing at the front with uh, my wing um, you can send a bus and so you could do that okay <laughs> yeah Ashiel is also waiting for the the rack version yeah man it's gonna come I'm pretty sure there's a lot of talk about it and a lot of demand. I just don't see how they can... You can do most of the thing with the screen. Like on the X32 rack, you can do pretty much everything. Well, actually, you can do everything from the front screen and the knobs. Uh, the wing software just need to evolve to that point. So far, I would say I don't know... I don't know what you can't do from the top of my head with uh, the screen, but if you don't use a command control, all the, the knobs on the right, uh, pretty much everything else can be done using the screen, I think. Maybe somebody in the chat have a different opinion about that, but seriously, like, I can see a smaller version of the wing with uh, no, custom, no main section. I, honestly, I don't use it, and all the stuff on the top right, I've don't use it I don't use the channel the center channel stuff I don't use that I could see a smaller version of the wing with like 16 fader or 24 or 20 fader and just a screen and have a 19 inch version like the M32R not to be racked the smaller version and I also see a, I also see a, a rack version as a, an option um, Oh yeah, Harry said you can send a bus to a channel to have an effects return. Yeah, but I don't see a use for it because everything that, you, that I want to do with it is can be done on the bus itself. Um, trying to patch a bus FX to a free channel. I don't see... Trying patching a bus EFX to a free channel. Sorry, I read don't uh, I don't get that. But if you just write it down, I'm uh, I'm gonna try to do it. Uh, like Rob said, uh, only the Midas version of the core is being sold. Yes, the M32C is still available. I don't know if it's stock somewhere. Uh, I was looking at some. Uh, I was looking to replace my X32 uh, core soon because I'm afraid after. I don't know how many years, but I'm afraid that the power supply was just crap on me. Uh, and just in case, you know, I don't keep my gear for 10 years, other than my laptops. But my sound console, actually my, my wing here uh, is two years old. It didn't tour much. It didn't see a lot of use, but as soon as maybe a smaller version will come out, m maybe not a rack, I would keep this one, but if a smaller version ever come out uh, this one's gonna go it will be up for sale and I'm just gonna move on to a smaller version because I have to carry this up and down one flight of stairs 
and by myself in the road case. It's it's not that bad, but I mean, I'm about to turn 35. I don't see myself doing that in 10 years still. Um, so Harry, just let me know, man. I want to sh uh, I want to understand what you're doing here with uh, what you want me to do here. I'm gonna go back to the console view and we are gonna check uh, our PDF document here. Sorry if this is... Uh, I'm gonna try to make it bigger. Oops, no. This. That's a little too big. Okay. This is as big as I can go. Sorry, guys. Um, so we covered the mono thing. We covered uh, the global switch. Now I understand how it works. I will definitely do a video uh, about that to explain that because I was not getting my head wrapped around it uh, in the beginning. So sorry if I keep saying so and doing all the time. I know when I listen back to those uh, live stream, it bugs me. You guys have no idea. Uh, option to send channel to both solo bus and live mode. I would need, I would need help on this one. Probably from Rob. Uh, I'm gonna grab my phone here. Um. Uh, okay, answer from Harry here. Well, if you use only the bus for the effects, the effects doesn't fade out immediately. Um, it depends on where you put the effect. If you... I'm gonna try to bring it up. It depends on where you put the... Oh, actually, I got nothing in there. Um... I'm in console view now, and I'm gonna take out that PDF, sorry. Um, to answer Ari's question, both insert, actually, the first insert is pre-fader and the second insert is post-fader. If you want to, I also have a video explaining how to keep your tail uh, with your effect if you want to have your your effects i know i'm doing this for my delay i just have a bus that i'm muting this that i'm using as a send to the delay and i mute the input so that way when i know my singer is going to say something that i want to throw in my delay i unmute that bus and i mute it back and it tells out if you are using the first insert it will cut out the tail but if you are using the second insert uh, it will only mute the input because the fader in the signal chain, the, the first one is pre-fader. This is where, actually, this is where, in between here, where your physical fader is in the signal chain. So if you are using uh, something, anything that will be after the EQ will be uh, post-fader. So that way you can do have your tail and have your your send to bus in the return or you can cut you know i'm pretty sure you get what i mean there if you want to have your tail in out or your um if you want to mute your input or mute your output it just depends on what effects that you should use for that one uh by the way you can click on that new help me menu to enter the second menu okay uh, we'll take a look at that. If I'm clicking here... Okay! We have input select, so... The auto input selects. Can I just... Yes! This is so fun! I can just select everything. And having it like this... And I'm curious, if I'm doing this... 
Does it change anything or just it toggle? Okay, it just toggle between the main and alternate. So I could do like basically all the channel or just click here and select some channel. Like let's say my vocal is gone. It's not. Okay, great. Great feature. I love that. I don't know whoever think of that, but big thumbs up, my friend. I really like what you're doing here. Um, okay. I see some new things around here. Uh, I'm going to try to dive into that uh, solo thing. I'm just trying to... Da -da -da -da. Um, one more time is in the live mode. You can either only select turn bus. Okay, Okay, um, I'm gonna try to do this. Hold on. I'm gonna go to my last layer. This is also um, where everything in the solo source happens. So right now I got no solo source, everything is off. If I click on 39, that will set source listen channel. Okay. I'm not sure what I did here. Honestly, I thought it was like back in the day. Sorry. Camera man is sleeping on a job again. Um Back in the day on the, oops. Back in the day on the M7CL, you have the option to assign your listen to your main or your mono because the console has physically two, um, the console had physically two fader, but only in solo mode. What you, hold on. Uh, I read that. Sorry, solo mode. Let me read that again. I want to make sure I process it. When monitor is in solo mode or live mode, when monitor is in live mode, you could earlier only select if you wanted the monitor to be uh, to be one or the other, selectable per channel. This is new option you have. Sorry, solo mode. So when solo mode, it, when monitor is in solo mode. So it's supposed to be in live solo mode. If I go PFL, by the way, for everything. Okay. It does not do what I think it's supposed to do. <laughs> okay. Uh, go to a channel and select home block. Okay. Um, here you will find two icon representing a pair of headphone and a couple of speaker. Okay. Here. Okay. It's in the main section or it's not? No, it's not. Even if I click on the main, it doesn't show anything. If I click solo here, there is nothing. No, actually you guys hearing it, but I don't. Uh, I can't do this solo in place because
Okay, let's go back to it. Uh, uh, um. Go to a channel and select the home block. Yes, and you will find two icons representing a pair of headphones and a couple of. Okay, good. Yeah, I get that. This is where. Let's say just for fun, I'm going to put my kick in there. And let's say just for fun, I'm going to put my main one into solo speaker, not headphone. If I click solo here, I don't hear anything. If I go here and select off, if I go solo, I don't hearing hit in my headphone. Each press cycle the option. Hold on. Yeah, if you're doing this, okay, you have option for both. Okay, option for both. Okay, and how do I use that? Okay, so all basically, okay, I, I'm mistaking, I'm mixing thing up here. What you're saying is now you have the option to for channel to be listen into let's say your floor wedges and your monitor so it's basically monitor a b which yeah so the output for the f okay so it's basically like everything is you have the option to be a b or a b but back then it was not possible to have it was a or b not a b and a a or b and a b okay uh, question from Harry. Um, uh, I if you need only the last verb to repeat on your return, you need a return channel. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I get what you mean here, uh, Harry. On a DIY, for example, uh, it's maybe not DIY that you want to say. Or on a delay. Oh, sorry. I, I was reading DIY. My my eyes are getting tired. Um, on a delay, for example, if you need only the last verb uh, to repeat, you need a return channel. Mm, not really. Because it's not um, because the fader, because you have the fader in front of you, the bus is acting like a channel return. So that way you can mix it. Sorry, you can mix it in and out with the bus return. And because the and because it's uh, the effect is post fader, it will amplify or decrease the signal for that. I think if it, this is what you mean, if you just want to have something that you know that will tell, 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 you can do that with only the bus if you mute the input. Um, I could give you an example after that if you want to. I can do it here. I'm just going to try to figure out that solo thing. Uh, I think I got that right. And... Okay. So yeah, this is why I was mistaking the two solo thing. Now a solo source, uh, we're gonna move on to the next point on the list. Solo source via listen channel. Control solo on routing page of the route select. Source to listen channel. Okay, we're gonna listen. We're gonna take a look at this. Uh, source listen, that's right. Is there something new here first that I want to check out? Okay, no, there's a lot of stuff happening in the talkback. I will not check that. This is talkback. This is all talkback. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. I get what you mean, Harry. No, it will not cut it and I will show you.
Actually, you know what? Um, I know I can do this one. So uh, I'm going to do really, really quick a delay setup here for uh, Harry. I'm going to replace my channel here. I'm going to use a delay, delay, delay. What we got for delay? Nothing here. I'm going to use this one. I'm, I'm going to use... Gonna use, gonna use. Woo, 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 woo. Okay, I'm going to show you how I'm doing this uh, and I'm just going to send into 16. Just want to make sure that I don't have uh, anything for my sound check on my drum going into 16 and I'm just going to send my microphone. So my microphone is going into the delay. I'm going to turn my, um, I'm going to turn my delay off right now everything is on a dca so i'm just going to mute my bus and i'm going to give you a bit more of view of the console so you can see what i'm doing uh oh it just doesn't want to see it okay well you can see it in the corner because i don't want to totally redo my angle for this so oh you're not seeing it at all okay so, sorry, the camera's going to move. <laughs> there we go. So you can see the mute button here. So let's say that I want to talk. Now I'm, I'm talking, let's say that I'm singing. If I want to send something into delay, I just send something. Sun, 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 I just send something, sun, 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 something to the delay. To the delay, 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 delay. And I cut it. And when I cut it, it's keep on. B because it's uh, the delay is post fader. I can even write it if I want to and raise the volume, drop the volume, and just punch in some word if I want to and just have something like this and just mix in a new thing my delay if I wanted to. So I think this is what uh, you were after here, and I'm doing all this with the bus because the insert point for the delay is uh, after the fader. Actually, you can see here when I'm muting, thing, 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 thing. This is uh, post. Actually, yeah, this is not how it's supposed to be. Um, anyway, a a a a a. I can. I can talk and having only some word, 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 word into my delay if I wanted to. So, here you go. Uh, this is why I don't need, uh, this is why I don't need anything else for my delay. So, if you guys uh, let me, one second, I'm just gonna bring back my camera. Hold on, sorry guys. I'm gonna use this just because I had fun making it. I'll be back. It's way less um, deorienting for you guys like this. And I'm just gonna physically focus that. Here we go. Close enough for rock and roll. Is it, I just want to make sure, Harry, is it what you were talking about? Because I think I nailed it, but uh, I just want to make sure I answer your question. Okay, now back to uh, the solo thing. Where was I? Here. <laughs> nope. Here. 
Solo Source Channel 7, Ox 7 or 37. So, if I'm pressing, I'm gonna solo my master. It's less loud for me in my headphone. My master is in solo A. And I just want to make sure it's in A, B. I don't think I'm hearing it in A and B. Mm -mm -mm -mm. If I go A and B, I'm hearing it. If I go B, I'm not hearing it. Yeah. When I press B, I'm not hearing it. But my... <laughs> okay, I don't get that. I don't, uh, I don't get that at all, and especially the sort the the source solo. I don't get that at all. Uh, and this is the first time that I'm doing something like that that I feel bad about it because I'm pretty sure it's a cool feature, but I just don't get how to use it. And as soon as I will figure it out, I will have a good time doing monitor with that. So uh, talkback improvement. Let's see, talkback indication. Okay, let's go to talkback. Okay, uh, I think I will need a microphone for that. Rob, come on. Don't, don't apologize, my friend. You helped me so much here. Please. I don't, I don't think that apologies. Don't be sorry. It, this is crazy what we've done so far. You helped me out a lot. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna turn the camera when I'm speaking to you. Thank you, man. You just helped me out, like, discover a lot of things and be more clear about it. I know, uh, I know some people were not so proud of what I did with my other uh, firmware review before my channel got deleted. Sorry, I'm gonna come back <laughs> with that from time to time. Uh, some people thought it was uh, a bit of a struggle to see me struggling uh, through the, the, the release note, and I feel so... I feel so lucky to have you, to have people like Harry, who just... Uh... Okay, uh, yeah. Sorry, Harry just said something, uh, but I feel so lucky to have guys like you and just explain things here. I'm, I mean, if I can teach something to somebody, great. If I can learn something from somebody, great. I'm doing those live stream because I want to have fun, doing this and I'm basically hanging out with sound guys like me I mean it doesn't happen a lot anymore since the last year I I didn't hang out with any of my sound guy friend I didn't hang out with my monitor guy or when I'm doing monitor uh, I, w there's a club where I do monitor most of the time it's been a year it's been a year and a half since I saw those guys so it feels good to hang out with people that like the same thing that I do so Thank you, man. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'm going to try to plug in my microphone and use this as a talkback. Uh, sorry for it. I want to make sure of something. There is no talkback on the console. There's a lamp input, but there is no talkback. So I'm gonna plug a mic in. I'm gonna sorry, I'm gonna refocus the console. <laughs> Oops, too far. 
This is how I focus guns. This is how I focus stuff here. There we go. I'm going to use a really cheap Bayer Dynamic MC840. I hope you guys get that joke. Um, and I'm going to try to use a talkback. So my option for talkback is my microphone here. Oh, I don't have to use anything else. I can use my microphone. Great. I would love to use the MC840 for that, but uh, if I can do it with my microphone, it will be way easier. So, like this. Uh, I read there are two uh, phone jack in both sides of the mixer. Yes, but I think they are a split. As far as I know, they are not. Uh, they are the same thing. You basically, you have two headphone jack. Oh, my lighting guy. Oh, hello, Guillaume. My favorite lighting guy is in the room, everybody. Uh, everybody say hi to Penda Lonely. He's, uh, he's one of the guys that I used to work pretty much every day with before he left me to do some uh, tour, some arena tour. So give him, uh, give him a big round of applause. Just make him feel like a shame because I know he doesn't like attention at all. So please give him a hand. <laughs> okay, so... Why do light guys watch my stuff? It's not interesting at all. He doesn't even understand what we're doing here. Okay, so talk back. Uh, library, no, set up. No, view in the talk back section. So talk back channel, I'm gonna set that up so Hey, hey, okay, I'm back. Um, I would need to set up a mic because when I'm doing this, um, it, I'm not speaking into the live stream, which I believe now is something that I should do. So I'm gonna set into... Yes, I'm gonna set my lovely studio microphone here in... Um, in aux I'm local one and I need Fenta power and I was also need gain hey 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 
One, two, 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 two. Okay. You guys won't hearing it. You guys won't be hearing it, but um, it should be there. So, talkback indication on blah blah blah. Hold on. Let me read that. I actually want to understand what I'm doing here. So, talkback indication frame or selected channel during talk. Automatically open uh, talk destination when pressing solo on talk. Open talk tag to allow solo when you're on muting channel during talk. Okay, I don't get much of that, honestly. I feel stupid. <laughs> Should I? Should not feel stupid, there's a light guy in here, right? Much love, bro. Okay, so... I will rephrase that for myself. Talk back indication. Frame on selected channel or during talk. Okay, so it's probably up here. If I'm selecting that, it's cool. Talking. Okay, it says talking. If I mute, is it? No. Okay. Basically, what that does is when I'm enabling talk A, uh, physically on, on the screen, or I can probably assign a knob for that. It tells me in the top here. So even, I'm gonna guess here, even if I'm on a different channel, if I'm pressing talk A, it says talking. Which is really good. So that way you wonder why everything is feeding back, is because your talk back is on in the monitor. Open, automatically open talk destination when... Automatically open talk destination page when pressing solo on talk. Okay, we're gonna try that. I'm gonna go anywhere and press solo. Great, great feature. Uh, talk auto, push, latch. Okay, hold on. That's great. Uh, new talk tag to allow... New talk tags to allow soloing or unmuting channel during talk. Talk tags. Uh, this is probably these thing right here that are not available, or... Is this available on bus? Talk on, talk A solo. A, 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 and if I go back to... A, 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 does it show? And it doesn't show, or my bus or not. Okay. So the base, uh... Mm -mm -mm, don't want to say anything stupid here. Okay. So if I go and bus tags and why why bus 9? Okay. There's tags. Um I'm not too comfortable with tags. I This is some, probably something closer to what you had on the Pro 2 or other Pro series. Uh, let me... Ah. Uh. Merci, Guillaume. Merci d'être là. C'est pas grave si tu comprends pas. Back at it, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, you have replaced your mic as a talkback and you have not assigned a bus matrix output. This is what I uh, did with my other talkback, or let's see how can I do this with this one. Uh, my talkback is a eighth. I'm gonna... Is it push or auto? I'm gonna leave it to auto and I'm gonna talk into both. Can you guys... Can you guys hear that? 
chit, 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 chit. Um, I understand that in here I can, like, talk to, like, all my mixes. If I'm doing this, and I'm going, let's say, push. If I'm pushing A, hey, 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 hey. If I'm pushing A, it goes to the buses. And if I raise those bus, I go, hey, 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 hey. It doesn't show me. Even if it should. Hey, 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 hey. Should it show me the level on the console itself, like in the bus? They sh should they really be like... Hmm. Pop groups. Ah, uh, pop groups. Is there pop groups on the wing? I'm having a mental fart right now. I don't think there's pop group on the wing, right? We'll be in the in the DCA section. I think you have an option to have your DCA showing, like, sources like a pop group, but seriously, with 16 DCA on a console this size, like 16 DCA for 48 input, 48 channel, not input, because it could be up to 96, like I said before. That's a lot. Um, just give me a sec, guy. I just want to figure out why there is something in nine there we go there should not, should not be anything in there so just for fun let's go back to our talk back because i want to understand that thing so right now i'm right now i'm talking you can you guys can hear me i guess into the main out um Not sure what you're asking, there are no pop group. Yeah, uh, pop... Do you... I don't know, Robert, what your experience is with... Uh, with the Pro Series. But... Come on. Uh, with the Pro Series, we have something on them called Pop Group, which is basically like a VCA with no fader. So if you want to bring up a channel, some channel on the console, if you assign them on your pop group as an example uh, if you have a drum and you press your drum pop group the interface will repopulate uh, for the amount of fader that you have in that group with whatever you have in there tags are like pop group uh, I would check that out but hold on we're doing a lot of thing here <laughs> Tags are like pop group. Let's bring out a fader and check out tags. Uh, tags are DCA. DCA. Sorry, I might sometimes I might say some uh, sometimes I might say VCA or DCA, but they're pretty much the same thing, honestly. Um, your tags are your DCA assigned, basically. So. Yes, I mean, a, a DCA in a pop group is very, very close to being the same thing. So, yeah, no, yeah, no. I don't know. It's This is like... Uh, that, yes, that feature was added to the X32 recently. I mean, I don't understand your talkback question. Oh, my talkback question is, do you know what the tag for the talkbacks are? Because I try... Uh, uh, actually, no, I have two questions about talkbacks. One, when I press talkback A, that is assigned to pretty much everything. So, um, it's not A or B, it's one input. Okay. When I press talkback A, I don't see any VU meter 
going on the bus, or maybe I did something wrong and I was not looking at the bus. But I'm gonna here. I got my talk back that I'm gently tapping. Hey, 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 hey. I can hear it in my headphone, but I don't see anything happening on the bus side. I don't see any level of sand, even if I got that assigned. So, this is why I'm asking, is there something wrong with the talkback? Or there's an A-B talkback? I can try do this, assign it to all the bus, and try both. doesn't do much so yeah I think they're um, I don't know the talkback function here is not do is not working like the way I think it sh should work or would work um, I can have monitor dim if I wanted to but I can't seem to get it working and I just want to make sure that my tags... Do I have any tag? Or well, actually, do I need to tag my... bus so they will have my talk back? Just trying out something for fun here. Um, I don't want that to be in my DCA2, or do I? Anyway. Um, okay, I'm gonna try to tap my talk back again. I'm hitting on it really hard, so it should, yeah. Because I got nothing plugged in, uh, those buses. Well, actually, I would need to listen. I will need to press solo, listen to that. Nope, not working. Or is it because they're mute? Let's see that again. Oh, I don't see any VU meter coming in. But they are muting. Why are they muting? <laughs> Let's go automatic. My talkback is on right now and I I see that I'm talking, but I don't have any... If I go to the meter here, you can see that on my bus where I send my talkback, I got nothing. And now I'm talking really loud into my talkback. You can see it in aux 8. And I don't see any anything of that mic going to the output. So maybe, I don't know, maybe I did something wrong. Let's go back to uh, the chat here. Sorry, guys. Uh, I need to check on my wing. Wrap my head around it. 54 years old. You're young. This is how I feel waking up in the morning with all my back problem. <laughs> 54. Or at least I know some 54 years old that have a better back than I do. But they were pushing pens, not cases at 20. So... Um, okay, what else? I'm gonna try to go over this. We've been at, we've been at this for a long time now. Um, talk back. Okay. We'll have to get back on it. Uh, auto customize for listen and talk back channel. I'm not gonna try to dive more on that. It's just make no sense to me. 
support for uh, future wave language module. Uh, I probably will never get my hand on one of those, but it's good to know that it's there. Uh, bus, bus remove from SIP logic. Okay. Uh, which would make sense. You don't want to listen to your bus into your PA. Uh, I can try just to play around with it just for fun. Uh, I'm gonna go out of talk. No more talk back. <laughs> Just for fun. Hold on. Oh. Oh, wow. I feel so stupid. Okay. The talk back, why it's not working, because my physical knob on the right of the console was turned down. So, even if I had volume... Even if I had volume, the physical knob was stopping it. Because right now I can do this again. Have I have all my buses up and I can do A. Can you see the, the meter? Can you see the meter going? So, okay. So the physical... Remember, the physical knob will impact what you do on the console. I feel so... Wow. Okay. Uh, well, I feel a bit ashamed. So <laughs> we're going to move on and check out the, uh, the solo in place. Just for fun. Uh, no, that's in talkback. We need to go into setup. Is it audio? The solo in place. Yeah, solo in place is a feature that you probably know. Uh, if you are like me having a, a, a band, loud, and you only want to listen to one thing, it will replace... Um, it will replace whatever you have sending through your main, and you will only listen to that into the PA. This is a very dangerous feature, if you ask me, because um, a guy that I know basically started a show, put his headphone his headphone on, press solo to listen to the bass drum, and. 10,000 people turn around and look at him because only the bass drum was going to the PA. He took the solo out <laughs> and never and never did that mistake again because the solo in place will replace whatever you have. Well, we'll actually use your headphone and main out as you're listening so it's really good if you are in a studio it's pretty much the same thing as if you are to use your uh solo in studio but i don't know if it's cutting out in the studio i never tried it actually so i'm gonna try it now can you guys hear yeah 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 yeah, yeah you can hear that so there you go this is it this is uh this is the solo in place. It's really close to what you have in studio, but solo in place. And also, this is why they have, there's a, a small yellow, yellow knob here, solo in place. I suggest you to leave it alive. <laughs> that way you don't, you know. Or maybe if you want to have something in your solo, but don't use that for guitar solo. <laughs> okay. Um, let me check back that PDF again. Bug fix, uh, pitch fix, good. The o, uh, the OSC, like I said, packet sending thing. This is not something that I would use. Hmm. <laughs> okay. So I think we covered it. I mean, I can still check it out. Quickly. Uh, yeah. We pretty much cover it. So this is the update for firmware 1.11 on the wing. This is this is really crazy. Uh, I'm just checking here. 
This is really crazy the amount of feature that we have now uh, in the wing for basically free. We have a lot of new plugin. I don't really know if I'm going to use them all. Probably the velvet thing is something that I will do once and will never use again. Or maybe not. Time will tell. Um, we've been going at this for like... Three and a half hour? Am I cutting right? Yeah, three and a half hour. So, <laughs> it's uh, it's been a long stream. There is a lot of people still in here. I have like 16 right now. Thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate that. Oh yeah, I got a timer. Three and a half hour here. Uh... Yeah, it's a it's a deep dive. Let's just say say it out that way. It's a deep dive into the console. Uh, glad to know that I'm not the only one in the world who like that stuff. Thank you. We're at least we're at least 15 because I know my light friend, my light guy, is probably um, who, whose name is Guillaume too. So we have the the same first name, even if we're even if he's 10 years younger than me. Um, I don't know. Names go by batch, right? So we're at least 15 other people who like that stuff. Uh, I'm degrading now. Guys, thank you for being with me for three hours. A special, special mention to Rob, uh, Dream Hamster Production, and Harry, who you guys just stick around. Thank you. I know I have my regular to show up. Uh, I'm gonna bring have the, the bring up the chat so I can see. Uh, Herman, Herman, thank you very much for being here, dropping by. I know Rolf DC was around too. Uh, Stefan, who asked me a really good question today on Facebook, and Pancho Par. Hey man, you only comment once in the beginning of the of the show and never look back. Okay, it's all right. Thank you also to Peter, who has the uh, Wing Studio Group. Thank you very much. You allow me to post my stuff on your on your Facebook group, and I really appreciate it. Um, if uh, anybody else want to help me, please post this on the main uh, Facebook Wing group, because I got banned, and I was reaching a lot of people there, and I can't reach people anymore because I can't post on that group. But if you, if you can, if you can share something that has to do with the wing for real, like this is wing stuff. If you're a nerd like me, um, post it there for me. I can't. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to beg. I feel bad. Uh, I feel like I'm begging for people to share my stuff. So I don't want to beg. I just want to say, if you want to, if you think that. Uh, it could be useful for somebody there. Post it. Okay. Enough of me rambling. I think I did that enough for today. For at least the last three and a half hour. Guys, thank you for being here. Please, until the next video, stay safe. Take care of yourself. Go have fun with your wing. Subscribe if you're not subscribed to the channel. Like that video. Uh, I don't know how many likes that I have. Six, and you guys are 15 here. I should at least see 15 likes. Thank you very much. Interaction like that helping me a lot. I just tried to grow this channel to uh, something really small. I have a realistic idea. I just want to grow to like a thousand subs. Get the small amount of money that I could get from the ads that run in front of my video anyway. Uh, it, it, this is how you, YouTube is working now. They just run ad in front of your video, and if you're not monetized, uh, you just don't get the money. So it's not going to change much for you, but it will change something for me. If you like that stuff, like I said, subscribe, like the video. Again, I'm repeating myself, but I need an outro. So take care of yourself, guys. See you all later. And this is where I missed the cue to the outro. See ya! <laughs>